know, you never know what somebody really thinks about you until they are so disgusted or angry with you that the only thing that comes across their mind is true feelings about what they feel. You know, it's like no, nobody knows what you got going on in your past. Or how much of somebody's future depends on the life of right now, you know? I mean, not everybody got the same story. Daniel J is an artist, first and foremost. Um, I'm someone that enjoys the creative process, the production process, and pretty much everything in between. You know, going from what inspires you to where your creativity comes from. Um, I'm a very compassionate person, um, which also means <laughs> that I wear my emotions on my sleeve a lot of the time. Um, and I'm just, I'm a people person. I like to watch people. I like to study people. I like to interact with people because I think that with whatever you do, um, whether it's singing, um, whether it's acting, your main focus is going to be people. You're, you're reaching out to other people. You're learning about other people. You're trying to connect with people. Um, and so I get very intrigued when I get to meet different people and get to see kind of who they are. Um, the look on my fiance's face was a look that could have destroyed the most impenetrable ego belonging to the most invulnerable man. And being that I was nowhere near that man, simply obliterated my life. The writing process for Closed Mouths Can't Sing was a very long one for me. Um, I had never written a show before. I had never uh, taken my hand at writing a stage play before. Um, and when I started writing, I actually kind of took from some poems that I had written um, in the past. And a, my first character, which was Verlene, came from a poem that I had written maybe a year or so before I started writing the show. I guess being part black was any good a reason to treat me like disposable property. It was no wonder that my generation talked about freedom. Freedom from being called nigger bitches who were beaten to an inch of our lives. Raped by various white men who pistol whipped us and gagged our mouths with liquor covered socks. Men that forced us to watch our strong, young, and fine black men humiliated, pissed on, and hung up on a tree like some damn Christmas ornament. I think my, my most kind of out there uh, character in regards to the story is uh, a character that I wrote called Darnell. And the writing process for him, for his story, was interesting because I had never um, experienced his story. You know, I'd never been in a position where I've been engaged and shared something uh, to my fiance, and she totally rejects me and totally breaks down, um, you know, my ego and, and, and my feelings and, and my value as a man. I've never been in that situation. And so to write his story and for his story to just come so organically was something that was very kind of awkward for me, um, but still something very powerful because it touched bases with other people that I, you know, didn't know that it would touch in that way. Um, I definitely want to um, do Broadway. I think that I have what it takes to do Broadway, um, but I would love to do film and television and really get my singing career um, off the ground and, you know, do it all. I, I really want to do it all, but I definitely love the stage um, and I do want to, you know, do it professionally on the stage. Sometimes I feel like a mother.